All right, man, peace. So those of you brothers who have been following the NBA know that the Philadelphia 76ers are one of the young and upcoming teams on the rise. I predicted them to be a sleeper team this season, and they've been playing very well. Despite the fact that their number one draft pick, Markel Fultz, has been injury plagued, not just physically, but mentally, it seems. But it's been a great thing for him, and he'll realize that many years from now, because he's been put through a gauntlet, per se, in which he's been forced to face the fact that many of the people who he assumed would be in his corner are really not. And that's the only way and the only time that you truly find out who's with you is when you go through adversity. Well, the superstar center for the Philadelphia 76ers, Joel Embiid, has touched on these subjects. And of course, they're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. Sports Center right now, the Sixers hoping to continue their winning ways into the NBA All-Star break. Philly riding a four-game win streak, haven't lost at home in over a month. Welcome in the Heat tonight, who are just a half game behind them in the standings. One of the big storylines surrounding the 76ers is about rookie Markel Fultz, who hasn't played since October as he's battled issues with his shoulder and his jump shot. Joel Embiid knows a thing or two about being sidelined to start his pro career and is supporting his teammate. He said this to NBA TV. I don't exactly know what the origin of the problems are. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I don't feel like a lot of people around him have had his back. Well, Joel Embiid is speaking from experience because even though he is finally starting to fulfill his potential, Joel spent the first two to three seasons of his career off and on the injury report. He was unable to stay healthy, so he also went through that period where probably many people who he thought would have his back did not have his back. Once again, it is not a bad thing to go through adversity. It's a great thing. It illuminates the world for you. It helps you understand how cutthroat the real world can be. When everyone is telling you how great you are, that is not reality. When you want to know what reality is, hit rock bottom. That's when you find out who's in your corner and who is not. Who is just there to see if they can siphon off of your light. And that's all it's about. So Markel Fultz, he's going through a great period right now. He's, he's truly starting to find out who's with him and who isn't. And before you go to battle, you have to know which soldiers are going to fight with you as opposed to which ones are just going to run behind you. And as soon as you show any signs of slippage, you're going to shoot you in the back. Back. He's only 19 years old. That can be hard. The people around you that are supposed to support you that are not supporting you is hard. Now let's get it back to first take. I suspect that Joel is talking about many members of the Philadelphia 76ers front office and maybe also some of the coaching staff. There was a report that I believe it was Brett Brown, the coach of the Philadelphia 76ers, took Markel Fultz aside and asked him what was going on, and Markel decided to confide in him. And then come to find out, Brett Brown went to the media and or members of the Philadelphia Upper Brass and stated that it was quote-unquote all in his head. And maybe it is mostly in his head. But for a young man to confide in you like that, there should be a level of confidentiality because you're basically a proverbial psychiatrist for him. He's only 19 years old. I'm sure that he feels bad about himself for not being able to play this year. Prior to the season, he claimed that, that not only did he want to be the rookie of the year, that, but also that he wanted to be the MVP of the league. We know that that is delusional, but that just goes to show you the expectations that he put on himself. So sometimes you have to be cognizant of that before you decide to run your mouth. Can the Sixers please draft a player that can start right away? Gentlemen. Now, did you see what Molly Karam just said? That is an example of how callous people can be and how they view these athletes only as two-dimensional characters, not real people. All she's concerned about is the Philadelphia 76ers, quote-unquote, drafting someone who can play right away. Not the fact that he clearly is going through some type of a psychological issue where he needs help. But that's a good thing. Once again, that's a lesson, particularly for the so-called black man who uh, dominates most of the major sports in America, to understand that all they view you as is an asset to be used and discarded when you're no longer relevant. That is why, once again, you cannot have this mentality that there is loyalty associated with sports. You're supposed to get yours. And make sure that your family and your loved ones are, are properly taken care of. 
and the hell with the rest of these people. Joel Embiid says people close to him don't have Markel Fultz's back. Max, who do you blame for the whole Fultz situation? You ready for this, Molly? Oh, ready I'm ready. This, Buckle up. I blame Stephen A. Smith. What? What? And by the way, me? There, me? Yes, there are there are others, Stephen A. It's everyone who thinks like you. I agree. And I believe that what Max Kellerman is implying is that Stephen A. Smith is one of the type of people who will state that Markel Fultz has been an, an unbelievable disappointment without truly factoring in that there are circumstances that uh, have predicated that he's suffering from a certain issue and you have to you have to work with that young man. You gotta walk him through whatever his problems are. So that he can so that you can help him maximize his potential. Taking the rough approach is not always the proper approach uh, when dealing with certain issues. You do have to be cognizant of what someone is going through. Show a little empathy so that everyone can everyone can win. If you're a member of the Philadelphia 76ers upper, upper brass, why would you want to reveal the fact that he's dealing with psych, a psychological issue? Just what, so that you can satiate the media who's asking you all these questions? All you have to tell them is that when Markel is ready to play, he's going to play. That's it. Now, the San Antonio Spurs, it seems like they were considering utilizing the same tactic with the Kawhi Leonard situation trying to imply that Kawhi is having a mental issue but then they they quickly rolled it back because they understood that San Antonio is not an appetizing location for free agents if they get into a beef quote unquote with their with their primary star that is going to turn into a big situation it's going to mushroom and it's going to stop them from ever having the possibility of signing a big time free agent so sometimes you have to think Three, four steps ahead. But you are most prominent among them. You, you are, you symbolize, you're emblematic of this person. And you are uh, uh, absolutely out in front on this issue. You stand on principle. You have a philosophy. If you're drafted here, you need to see something from this guy right away. He needs to start checking your boxes. And if he doesn't, you are all over him. You are all over the organization. You will, as you say, religiously bring up his draft position and his production. True. And the fact remains that throughout NBA history, guys develop at different rates. I agree. And I totally agree with Max Kellerman's volley at Stephen A. Smith. But you know, we all know why Stephen A. does that. He does that for hot takes. He does that to appear as if he's on people's asses and he's going to call people out and all this all these other things. Same reason why they were attacking Lonzo Ball for the majority of this season. And all he was was a young man going through a shooting slump. Prior to his injury, he was starting to come out of it. Everything takes time. When you want your flower to grow, you have to water it and you have to provide it with sunlight. You can't put it in a dark room and deprive it. Steve Nash was nothing the first couple of years. He was nothing. He didn't do anything, really. He Great point. He developed into an all-time great, a future Hall of Famer, two-time league MVP. Some guys hit the ground running, other guys don't. Particularly in the era of one and done, when we just had this conversation earlier in the show, talking about Trey Young, he needs to go get his money now. When you don't have three, four years to develop in college, and you're drafted very high, the pressure is on you to produce right away and what are we hearing about markel fultz oh boy that's a that's a longer three point shot than i used to shoot now i may have to change some things and his shot got all messed up and he's never gotten back and i don't agree with that assessment i think that that's an excuse and when players with that much talent start to make excuses that to me is a red flag that he's going through a psychological issue and that you have to assist him you have to walk him through these things because in college he showed that he had great range the NBA range is not the issue. I believe that he hurt his shoulder and he started to make excuses when he tried to play through the, sh through the shoulder injury and it metastasized into a psychological issue. So this is why you can't rush greatness. If he's meant to be great, he's going to be great, but you got to take your time with him. They have enough talent to go this season without throwing him out there into the fire, to the wolves. It's not like he's a number one draft pick on a team with no other talent, like he's Devin Booker or somebody like that. They have a lot of talent on that team. They're over 500 without him. 
you know, you walk him through this season. The kid is only 18, 19 years old. He'll be back next year. But you have to be very, very sensitive to people like that because that is an investment, not just for his well-being, also for yours. You don't want to go. Uh, you don't want to go through a whole season where you basically have wasted a number one draft pick because you want to treat him like he's a, um, you know, <laughs> like he's a recruit into the military. And why? Because he has to respond to undue pressure where you're standing on principle rather than saying, let's see what happens here. This dude's a 19-year-old rookie man, and man, reserving man, man. judgment until you see them develop. We're running Stephen out of time. So oh, let, I can't let, wait. Go, Stephen. We're running out of time. So allow me to respond to that dribble you just spewed, the nerve, the audacity, the unmitigated goal for you to sit up there and to blame me. I have absolutely, positively nothing to do with this. I will not accept a shred of accountability for what the hell has happened to that young man. Have you seen that butt-ugly jump shot? that he throws out there right now. I mean, it is horrible. I have nothing to do with that. I watched a guy out of Washington that was averaging better than 22 points a game or something like that, okay? This brother plays just four games for the Sixers. He shot 33% for the field, 50% for the free throw line, scared to shoot jump shots, didn't even attempt the three-pointer, and they sat him down. Why? Because some trainer, and Jalen Rose alluded to this yesterday as well, some trainer by the name of Keith Williams has been accused of changing this dude's shot. To the point that when he came back, he was not the player anybody recognized. So you got people in his inner circle, whether it's his trainer slash agent or whomever the hell it is. You've got the Sixers, who, by the way, could be accused of being guilty of being comfortable. Why? Ben Simmons, number one overall pick. He sits out a year. No problem. And Joel Embiid, a couple of years earlier, sits out a couple of years. No problem. Because trust the process. No, they were not sitting out because they were trusting the process. They they sat out because they had debilitating injuries, Stephen A. Smith. You know, the same way that you claim that you were playing at a Division three school or Division two school, wherever you were at, at Winston-Salem, and you claim that you cracked your knee in half. Should, you, should your coach, Clarence Big House Gaines, have said after two weeks, okay, walk it off, nigga, and I go out there and shoot some more? It happens, Stephen A. Smith. Maybe his shooting coach redesigned his shot release because Markel Fultz felt pressure to come back after he had a very bad shoulder injury and ended up sending him back as opposed to him just being sat down, wait for his shoulder to heal properly, and then resume shooting in the proper way. You cannot change your shooting form and expect to be as effective as you were before, not, not in a month period or a two-month period. Steph Curry often talks about how he spent one summer perfecting his new shooting style with his father and they had to so diligently go on this is when he was about 12 or 13 years old this is when he was still in his formative stages that's how long it takes for a child to reform their shot you're talking about an adult who's been shooting the same way probably for what eight nine years and now due to a debilitating injury he has to totally change his shot and you coming on TV talking about how his shot is butt ugly. His shot is not as butt ugly as the shot that I, sh that I saw you shooting when you were at the practice facility with James Harden, making an ass of yourself. A young man still has time. Don't throw dirt on his grave yet. Trust the process. That's oh, what dude, the hell they did. And so because folks trusted the process, and now they're seeing that it paid dividends, even though I don't buy that crap, what happened? Markel Fultz sits down with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid pretty much balling together. You're looking at Markel Fultz and you're saying, there's no level of urgency. We don't mind him not playing another game this season. So the Sixers, in an in a indirect fashion, on a significantly lesser level, is culpable. And then whoever the coach is that Good messed point. up his shot, his game, his confidence, his all-out baller mentality, they are accountable. Well, it was the Philadelphia upper management who were putting pressure on Markel Fultz to, to play this season. It actually was not them who were pressuring him to not play. They were the ones pressuring him to play. And after it was revealed that he still had an issue, a very obvious issue with his shoulder, and they did not know what was structurally wrong with it. They claimed that they ran their MRIs and found nothing, but you can't trust most of these teams' medical staffs. All you have to do is look at Isaiah Thomas. That's when... The media started to put the pressure on Philadelphia to make a decision in regards to what they were going to do. That's when the decision was made to sit him down, and he should be sat down. He needs to look over film of himself in college and spend time by himself trying to regain the stroke and the confidence that he had last season.
And certainly don't spend any time, waste any time listening to people like Stephen A. Smith, who's a professional troll. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, brother's a the brother's necessary. I won't call him a necessary evil. He's necessary because uh, he spews a lot of strong opinions. Some of them he's correct. Some of them he's wrong. But it's not about so much whether you're right or wrong. It's whether you're right-headed or wrong-headed. Like, really, what is... What is the purpose of being so wantonly negative about an 18, 19 year old boy who's still trying to find his way in the NBA? He has not even stepped on, on the floor yet. I understand being hard and being firm, but it's not like he's dogging it. If there was ever a moment, Max Kellerman and Molly, mm -hmm. Molly and Max, if there was mm -hmm. ever a moment where I, Stephen A. Smith, stands before you completely innocent, innocent in every way, <laughs> it is now. I am innocent. I am not attempting to do it. I am not attempting to do it. Yeah, he did. No accountability for this. Told on himself a little bit. This time he doesn't have any accountability. No accountability. Two different things you're talking about here. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. Nothing. Markel Fultz was selected by Sam Hinkie. It was his first big move. Ben Simmons and Embiid were, uh, were the previous regime, and the, you know the smart guy picked them, and the guy who's not as smart picked Mar Markel Fultz. So that's right. Some of it's just the quality of the players. But there's an old expression, never show a fool half a job. And what happens with these one-and-done kids and kids straight out of high school who are, there's no G League, as I said earlier in the show, like in Major League Baseball, they send you to the minors sometimes. Even if you're the number one overall pick, sometimes the low minors, and you work your way up developing under the radar, you are on front street day one, and what everyone's seeing is half a job. And that pressure, I believe, is affecting Markel Fultz. I agree with that. I believe that, um, I believe that he's being prone or, or he's being revealed a little bit too much. The saying is to trust the process. Sometimes people don't need to see the process. Like they say, you don't want to see how sausages get made. <laughs> you just you just want to eat the sausage when it's done. For those of you who eat sausages, in regards to Markel Fultz, they need to really keep the camera off of him. I'm very upset that you felt the need to have the last word in this segment because the key here is I am innocent. Yeah. I am After innocent. 18 years in the I city, what you did to those Sixers fans was a very sad statement. I did nothing. People are excited about the... But anyway, uh, hopefully Markel Fultz will be able to emerge out of the little ditch that he's in. It's a part of life. You go through things. You hit rock bottom. You have your ups and downs. Point being is that during times of prosperity, don't allow yourself to get too delusional. And during times of adversity, do not allow yourself to get too down on yourself. Because that is when people will try to throw dirt on you. And that's okay. All it does is reveal their nature and reveal who's truly in your corner. So hopefully Markel Fultz will be resolute. Peace.